YouTube. Today I'll be reviewing the Print and Share app. Print and Share is available for all iDevices, the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod Touch. It's currently $8.99 in the App Store. And now with iOS 4.2 coming out, Apple has added AirPrint to all iOS devices. But in order to use AirPrint, you need to have either an AirPrint compatible printer or a Mac with the AirPrint feature. If you don't have either of these, you can still print from your device using this app, Print and Share. So let's take a look at how it works. I'm currently running an iPod Touch 3rd generation 32GB with Print and Share version 4.2.5. And this is Print and Share's home screen. Here you have access to settings and then choices of what to print. Now let's talk about what it can print before we get into uh, what it prints and how it prints. It can print to virtually any printer you want it to. It works with all Wi-Fi printers, wired USB printers, Bluetooth printers, and network printers. First of all, it'll print to Wi-Fi and network printers through your device's Wi-Fi connection. Any network printer connected to your current Wi-Fi connection will be compatible with this app. Wi-Fi printers are also compatible, but you do need to be connected to any Wi-Fi printer to use them. But your Wi-Fi also needs to be turned on to use Wi-Fi printers. For example, if you go to a library with a Wi-Fi printer, you can print to that printer without connecting to the library's Wi-Fi. The app will also print to Bluetooth printers that are connected to your device via Bluetooth. Lastly, it will print to USB printers. But in order to print to USB printers, you need to download and install the WePrint program on your computer that the USB printer is connected to. WePrint is available on Print and Share's website and is compatible with both Windows and Mac computers. After installing the software, it will recognize your Print and Share app and it will also recognize all the printers connected to the computer it's installed on. Then those printers will become available to print from your device. So let's get into how this program actually works. I'll first demonstrate the files option. This app will store a bunch of files on your device. You can store PDFs, office documents, and text documents. But a really cool feature is that you don't have to use some scientific way of getting those files uh, to this portion of the app. For example, you can use your email app. Let me just open up an email document. Okay. So I opened up an email with a Word document attached. So I'll open up that Word document. And the email app is now viewing the Word document. In the Word document, it says this is a Word document to, trust, to test print and share. You'll notice up here is a little share icon. Just click on that. And then you'll see your choices. Open in print and share, or open in, or print. Now, depending on what firm you're running, this button up here will look different. It may say open in, or maybe this little share button. If you have, if you do not have iOS 4.2, you will see open in. But if you have iOS 4.2, it will be a share button and you'll have a print option. Now this print option is not the option you want to use. Um, this option is AirPrint. And so if you don't have any AirPrint compatible printers or devices, then you cannot use that option. So we want to open in Print and Share. Now, if Print and Share is not listed, then you just select open in and it'll give you a full list of all the apps that you can open it in. So we'll just select Print and Share. And it'll automatically switch to Print and Share and it'll bring up the print screen. So here it'll tell us what document it's going to print. And then we have the choice of choosing a printer that we want to print to. Whoops. Let's get that back up and running. Well, that was not expected. Never happened to me before. Obviously, a small bug in there. The app just crashed. Go 
go ahead and try choosing a printer again. There we go. So now we have a full list of all printers. All right, so these are all the printers they can connect to. Actually, we'll go to available printers. So these are all the printers that I can connect to. So uh, first, we it'll show both the printers that are going through the program that is installed on my computer and all Wi-Fi printers. I do have one Wi-Fi printer um, in my house, and so that is the Epson Workforce 610 series here. That is a Wi-Fi printer, and so it is picking that up as well. All the other printers um, are being picked up through my computer. As you can see, like I have QuickBooks and uh, OneNote printers on here. Uh, those are computer printers, um, so you can still use those. And then anything that ends in at, um, and then laptop, that is something that's going through my computer. Um, laptop is just the computer name, so it'll say at and your computer name. Basically, you just select the printer that you want to use and then the number of copies you want and then select print. It'll say now printing. And it only takes a few seconds. Alright. And it sent the file to the printer. Very shortly, we should hear the printer start printing. While we're waiting for it to print, we'll start moving into the email section. So the email section, uh, the only drawback is it doesn't connect to the app's built-in uh, email. So basically it's an email uh, client on its own, which means you have to add a, um, an email address to the app. So what I did is instead of using this app as my main email client, uh, I wanted to use the regular email app. So I made a, a free um, live.com email address and made that reserved just for this app. Uh, so now um, whenever I want to print something, I just forward it to that email address and then open up this app. And so let me open up an email. And there's a printer going from that file I just sent. And when you're printing something through that program on your computer, it's going to take a little longer because it goes through your computer first. But here's the file. Okay, here's an email. I just covered up some private information, uh, but it says this is a test email at the top. Uh, touch screens. Alright, it says this is a test email. You can see that. And then there is a there is a small printer button up here in the corner. Just select that button and you are greeted again with a familiar screen. Basically just choose your printer, number of copies, and select print. Again, it will send the file to the printer. Okay. So while that is being printed as well, we'll move on to web pages. Yes, you are able to print web pages. Again, a drawback uh, is that it does not tie into Safari. So basically what I do is I use Safari. It's my main browser. And let's open up, we'll, we'll go with Lifehacker. And there's that email printing. It's actually really slow today. I have, it may be my Wi-Fi. So it usually prints a lot faster than that. Let me get that. 
Here's the email. All right, so I'm in Safari right now. Here's a life hacker article. Say I wanted to print it. Just go up in the address bar, and then we'll tap in there to get the select all option. Select that, and then click on copy. Then you can switch back to print and share. Go in the address bar and X out of that and paste it in there. And then click on go. And there's the article. Uh, but if you did want to use this, well, one side note here. Um, this actually wouldn't make a bad alternative to Safari. One thing I really like about it is if you shake it, goes to full screen. Can't do that in Safari. So that's one thing I do like about it. Shake it again and it goes back. Alright, so there's the print button up there again. And then you have uh, two options. You could print what is viewing on your screen, or you could print um, from the address. Basically, it'll just, it won't take what's on the screen. It'll just reload the address and print that. And this is a nice option um, because sometimes with like more advanced websites, uh, there may be something like the different viewing on your screen than on somebody else's screen, but it's the same exact address. So uh, most likely you're going to want to do a print from screen. Then print that as well. And again, it will send that to the printer. All right. So that's web pages. Next is contacts. Um, now this does tie in to your device's contacts app. Uh, I'm not going to open my contacts because I'll review their phone numbers and all. But um, it does tie into the contacts app. So any contacts you have stored on your device, you could print out their information. It'll print out a phone number, email address, any information you have stored uh, with that contact. So that's also a nice feature. And then lastly is images. You could print any photos stored on your device. So I'll select this and click on the print button and I'll choose print. Alright, and I believe that's the web page instead of the photo. Yep. So there's the web page. Print it out. I don't know why it took so long to print. I assume with a, I know with a Wi-Fi printer, a regular Wi-Fi printer, or a Bluetooth printer, or a network printer, uh, it definitely will be a lot faster because it's going right from your device uh, to the printer. And that was a pretty long article. All right, so, um, but when you are printing to a USB printer, well, this one printed pretty fast. Here's the image. If you are printing to a USB printer, then um, it has to go through the computer than to the printer. So it is going to take a little longer, but I don't know why it's taking so long today. Just probably my Wi-Fi router may be a little busy. Alright, and I do like how it blows up the image a little bit. So that's also nice. Alright, so that is printer share. That is my... Uh, overview of furniture. I highly recommend this app to anyone who, who would like to print stuff from their device, but they don't have AirPrints compatible devices like me. I don't have a Mac, I don't have any printer that's compatible with AirPrint, so I can't use AirPrint, but PrintShare is an excellent alternative. Uh, remember, AirPrint will come out sometime with the release of iOS 4.2 this month. Um, if you haven't seen my iOS 4.2 uh, overview already, I have a video posted demonstrating all the features of iOS 4.2.